Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to talk about the vector product of two vectors. So let's say we have vectors A and vector B. Now, vector A and B are in the same plane. And it doesn't matter what the direction of vector A or vector B is, they will always be in the same plane. You can always draw a plane that will contain vector A and vector B, regardless of their directions. For example, if you have two vectors like this, you can put them in any direction you want. The two vectors will always form a plane. Now, there's always an angle between the two vectors. Let's call the angle theta. Now, what is the vector product? Well, the vector product of A and B are such that the result of that vector product will be another vector, and that vector will be perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. Let's call that vector vector C. So the notation that we use for that is as follows. If we have A cross B, and that's why we call a vector product. The vector product is set A cross B or A times B but it's a vector product. In other words, the result of that will be another vector, vector C. There's also called a dot product. When we do a dot product between two vectors, you get a scalar as a result. When you do a vector product or cross product, so another way of calling that, this is also called a cross product, then the result of that is another vector. Notice that the direction of that third vector, the resultant vector, is perpendicular to both A and B, which means that that vector is perpendicular to the plane formed by A and B. Now, the magnitude of that vector C can be found as follows. The magnitude of vector C is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. Now that's kind of interesting because notice as the, as the angle gets smaller, the sine of the angle gets smaller and the magnitude of vector C will get smaller as well. The maximum size of the vector will be when the angle is equal to 90 degrees. So when the two vectors are perpendicular to one another like this, then the third vector, vector C, will be its maximum value. As the angle gets smaller between the two vectors, vector C will become smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, when the two vectors are parallel to each other, the cross product or the vector product to do vectors are parallel is equal to zero because the sine of the angle between them will be zero as well. All right, another thing is that to find the direction of C, use what we call the right-hand rule. Take your hand, put turn your fingers, point your fingers in the direction of A, then curl your fingers in the direction of B, and your thumb will point in the direction of the resultant vector C. So if this is vector A and that's vector B, point your fingers in the direction of A, then curl your fingers in the direction of B, and your thumb, your thumb will point in the direction of C. What if you do the reverse? What if you do B cross A, or the cross product, or the vector product of B times A? What is that equal to? So if we go B times A, we do the vector product in reverse, that is equal to the negative of the vector C. In other words, we then get a vector in the opposite direction, like this. This is vector C, and of course it's a negative direction, so we'll put a negative in front of it, and so this is equal to the resultant of B multiplied times A in reverse using the vector product. Again, if we use the right-hand rule, you point your fingers in the direction of B, you curl your fingers in the direction of A, and you can see that the thumb will point downward instead of upward. Magnitude-wise, it's exactly the same. It's simply opposite in direction. And that is what we mean by the vector product. You may say, well, why do we need vector products? Well, in mechanical engineering, there's a lot of cases where we need vector products, so there's lots of examples coming up. Right now, we just need to know that that is how we look at vector products. In the next video, we'll learn how to actually calculate vector products, and then we'll learn how to apply vector products to different kinds of situations. And that's how it's done.